So this is Memorial Day, so I want to share some new research findings on veterans. And this research links pesticide exposure to low brain choline as a potential cause of Gulf War illness. So my graduate student, Chloe Jones, she successfully defended her dissertation last week, and she's now heading off to UCLA for her neuropsychology internship. And she found a link between exposure to pesticides in the Persian Gulf and low brain choline now 30 years after the exposure. Now, one of my earlier videos, I shared our finding that individuals with Gulf War illness or GWI, they have lower brain choline. And since choline is a precursor of acetylcholine, this would mean that they have low brain acetylcholine as well. And low acetylcholine would cause problems with memory and attention and concentration and other cognitive tasks. So the question is, is why would individuals with Gulf illness have low brain choline? One potential cause is the long-term effects of organophosphate pesticides, and these were used to control insects and rodents. Now, the pesticides were used everywhere in the Gulf War. There were sprays, foggers, they were used on clothing, and so those definite exposure that the soldiers had to those agents. Now, the, organ the organophosphates cause issues by halting the action of acetylcholinesterase, which causes a buildup of acetylcholine in the synapses. And at high doses, like with the sarin gas, this causes cholinergic overstimulation or a cholinergic crisis. And that causes symptoms like nausea and convulsions. And at really high doses, it can cause a, a coma. Um, so it's possible also for these agents at lower dosages to cause long-lasting effects through neuronal damage. Even if you don't have a cholinergic crisis, there may be long-term neuronal damage. And that would manifest as cognitive issues and psychological issues. So that's really the idea that exposure in the Gulf War to organophosphate pesticides may cause neuronal damage that we see later potentially as low choline. So Chloe looked at 20 Gulf War illness participants and 20 veterans who were in the Gulf War, but they don't have Gulf War illness. And then in addition to looking at their brain, she also asked a lot of questions about exposures. And the GWI participants were significantly more likely than the healthy veterans to report that they had exposure to risky things. And that includes exposures to pesticides. So they reported exposures to pesticides on the skin and on their uniforms and sprayed in the area. Um, which is interesting enough, but not only that, but they also, the individuals who reported that they were exposed to pesticides were also the same people who had low brain choline in our imaging now 30 years after the exposure. And the red arrow here shows the choline in the individuals who reported pesticide exposure. Now, there are also signs of neuronal damage, but I'm going to talk about those at another time. So that's the main thing. Just really quick, I wanted to share that Gulf War illness might be a result of pesticide exposure that now causes low brain choline and low brain acetylcholine that's causing some cognitive issues. Now, there are some important caveats and limitations to this uh, quick research. By the way, this hasn't been peer reviewed yet. Um, one caveat is that the participants are recalling this from memory, and this was 30 years ago. And some people may have paid more close attention to the pesticides than others. And so we don't really have a record of their true pesticide exposure. So we can't gauge the accuracy of the reports. So we have to keep that in mind. Uh, second, not all pesticides are, are organophosphates. So we don't know how much of their pesticide exposure was actually organophosphate exposure. Uh, third caveat is this was a pretty small sample, and so the study would have to be replicated in a larger population before we made any big conclusions, because I don't think anyone's ever reported this low brain choline in Gulf War illness. Uh, despite all those caveats, I think it's very interesting to have something that's self-reported, like how much exposure they had to pesticides, to correlate with something that we're getting objectively from the brain. So I think we should take this seriously and look at it more carefully. Uh, again, this paper is not 
um, available yet. We just sent it out for peer review. I'll let you know when it's published and when it's available for you to look at. For everyone right now, veteran or not, should you be concerned about pesticides? Well, organophosphate pesticides have been curbed considerably in the past 20 years because of the known risks to the human nervous system, um, but they're still available. Um, I don't know which products have organophosphates, uh, and I'm not an environmental toxin expert, so I can't give comprehensive advice. But the general advice is use other types of pesticides and prevent exposure to your skin or via breathing. So that's the quick update for today, and I'll be back next week, and I hope you're able to watch then.